Are we going to have an AI bubble? <laughs> That's the last question. All right, let's. No. <laughs> All right, let me well, let me just tell you what we see. Okay, so so I, I think it's really important when you look at what's happening around the world and go back to first principles of what's happening in computer science and computing. There are three things that are, that's happening. The first thing is that we all know that Moore's law has run its course, and the ability that the amount of demand for computing versus the amount of computation we can get out of general purpose computing is really challenging. And so the world's been moving to accelerated computing for some time. We've been pushing this now for some over 20 years. Let me give you one statistic. I was just at supercomputing. Six years ago, uh, CPUs were 90% of the world's supercomputers, top 500 supercomputers. Six years ago. This year, less than 15%. Went from 90% to 10%. And meanwhile, accelerated computing went from the other way, 10% to now 90%. Okay, so you're seeing that inflection point, the transition in high-performance computing from general purpose computing to accelerated computing. Well, one of the, one of the most data-intensive, one of the most intensive computation things that the world does in cloud is data processing. Several hundred billion dollars of computation is done on just raw data processing. It has nothing to do with AI. Just SQL processing, data frames, you know, everybody's names, address, their, their sex, their, their age, where they live, you know, how much money they make. All of that sits into a data frame, and that data frame drives the world today, whether it's in banking or, you know, whether it's in credit cards or, of course, e-commerce and uh, everything from ad recommendation. And everything is driven off of that data frame. That data frame costs hundreds of billions of dollars to go compute. And so that's the number one thing, end of Moore's Law. The second thing is generative AI. What the, the, the most important application of the last 15 years is called Rexis, Recommender Systems. How do we know what information to recommend to us uh, in a social feed? How do you know what ad to recommend to somebody, uh, what book to recommend, what movie to recommend? The world is, the internet is so gigantic without a recommender system, that little tiny phone of us will have no chance of ever seeing the right information. That Rexis is the engine of the internet today. That's going generative AI. It used to be running on CPUs, now it runs on GPUs. Which then says the third thing, when if you just look at those two applications, many of the internet companies can build enormous number of GPU supercomputers just doing that. Of course, then it creates this, the third opportunity on top of it, which is agentic AI. This is Grok, and this is OpenAI, this is Anthropic, you know, this is Gemini. Agentic AI sits on top of that. But don't, you know, don't forget to think about what is happening above, underneath, what everybody sees as AI today, there's a whole movement of computing from general purpose computing to accelerated computing. And that, if you just, if you take that into consideration, you'll come to the conclusion that in fact, what is left over to fuel that revolutionary agentic AI is not only substantially less than you thought and all of it justified.